Well, I must say you must have done some selling job on your mother. You mean she's going to help? Well, she said she would. In fact, she already is. She's compiling a list of, of possible contributors, as she calls the Golden Hundred. Daddy, that's wonderful. Then you two will be working together again. Now, don't go getting your hopes too high. I mean, your mother's a very civic-minded individual, and she made it perfectly clear that she's doing this for the people who need the clinic, and not for me. Come on, don't be such a pessimist. No, I'm not being a pessimist. I'm just being realistic about the situation. She's going to help with the fundraising for the clinic. But at this point, that's the extent of her involvement. Come on, Daddy. Don't you see? It's a start. Marianne, now you have been here all night. I've been, is there any change with Russ? Now I'm getting worried about you. You told Lori last night you were gonna go home. I couldn't. Please tell me how he is. Well, his condition's still serious, but at least he's stabilized. Is he gonna pull through? It's still too early to tell one way or the other. But Marianne, don't forget, we lost him on the way here in the ambulance, if only for a few moments. Now the Lord performed a miracle. By bringing him through that, surely, surely, he won't take him back again. It's a start. And even though she says she's going to do it for the clinic and not for you, she's going to realize very fast that you and the clinic are one. <laughs> well, maybe. She really was impressed with the place. And you should have heard her making plans for the fundraiser. <laughs> uh, she sure knows her business. Any new ideas? Well, for starters, she thinks we should shelve the idea of having a grand opening. Well, I mean, it's been open for some time now, the clinic mm -hmm. has. Mm -hmm. So why not simply just call it a fundraiser and leave it at that? The people she's contacting know they're going to be tapped anyway. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. She thinks we should also postpone it for a while until we get everything straight. I mean, we want to make sure that the potential uh, contributors, well, are going to make it. You mean everyone on her golden hundred list? Mm -hmm. I bet she knows more about where the money is in this town than the Internal Revenue Service. <laughs> no, I wouldn't doubt that. Oh. But what I want to know, Daddy, is if you two had a chance to talk. About yourselves, I mean. Well, a little. Just a little? Well, she told me what she did after she left Ohio, and uh, I filled her in on what's been happening in my life. So you told her how much you've changed? Well, she knew that pretty much already from you. <laughs> Although I don't think until last night she fully realized how much of that change was the result of my faith. I mean, she was really happy for me and everything, but when I told her that, uh, well, how my attitude toward abortion had changed, well, we politely avoided a heated debate. Oh, Daddy, remember how even when you were married, you two used to have heated debates about everything from politics to vacations. <laughs> now that you mention it, it wasn't that rare an event. <laughs> like one time, oh, I guess I must have been nine or ten. You wanted to go trout fishing to the mountains and mom wanted to go to the beach. Mm -hmm. I remember lying awake one night and listening to you two fight it out downstairs. I thought my whole world was gonna fall apart. 
It was pretty silly of us, wasn't it? My mom was about to pack up and take Kevin, Amber, and me to the to the beach and leave you to do whatever you wanted. <laughs> well, you wouldn't let her, would you? Well, what kind of a vacation would it have been without you? I don't know. That's when your mother and I realized how selfish we were being. You were the one who suggested a compromise. Was I? Mm-hmm. We went to the mountains for one week and to the beach the second week. It was a simple solution. I don't know why your mother and I didn't think of it, you know, earlier. And we had a good time, too, didn't we? Yeah, it was one of the best vacations we ever had. So you see, Daddy, you and Mom have a history of working out your differences. You've done it before. There's no reason why you can't do it again. You might be right. Oh, great compromiser. Well, when are you supposed to see each other again? Oh, I don't know. We didn't really make any specific plans. I'm supposed to call her today. So what are you waiting for? Well, it's still a little bit early. Oh, come on. Mom's an early riser. I've got her number right here. You can call her right now. <sighs> All right. I will. <laughs> Isn't there anything else you can tell me? I wish there was, Marianne, but Russ's condition is still critical. Now, I've talked with the surgeon, Dr. Einhorn, and he's encouraged by the fact that Russ has stabilized. But at this point, he says it's too early to make any guarantees. Ben, please let me see him. No, you cannot see him. He's still unconscious, Marianne. Ben! Just for a little while, please. I just want to go in there and sit with him. I have been here all night long waiting. I cannot leave. Ben, please just give me a few minutes with him. I'm sorry, Marianne. The hospital simply will not allow that sort of thing, especially for someone in Russ's condition. Now, look, what you need to do right now is go home and get some sleep. I, I can't leave him. Marianne. Marianne, look, I understand how you feel. I really do. But think about what you've been through in the last 24 hours. And you've been sitting here in this hospital waiting all night. Now, if you don't go home and get some sleep, you're not going to be able to take care of yourself, much less Russ. But what if he wakes up, Ben? I want to be here with him. Okay, then I promise that I'll give you a call if anything changes. But right now, you just go home and get some sleep. Okay. But you'll call me, you promise, when he wakes up? Of course I will. You know I will. Mm. Hey, love and prayer can work incredible things. We've seen that already. Hang in there. Someday, Stacy. Right on the front page. I wonder who that could be this early in the morning. Oh, Lee! <laughs> we did discuss the possibility of our having lunch today, did we not? Well, yes, the, the possibility, but we didn't say anything about breakfast. True, that was entirely my idea. She's Danish, my dear. Oh! <laughs> Well, since you put it that way, they look delicious. They're from that little, uh, little bakery over on Ducombe Street. Mmm. Mmm, delicious. Since you came by, um, I might as well tell you that I have made some tentative plans for lunch with someone else. Oh, no. Who? What does it matter? Just an old friend. Is it important? Well, I, I don't know. I, we did talk All about right. it. All right, that's settled. You meet me at my office at noon. Well, if that isn't what I call being bamboozled by a politician, mm. I don't know what is. So you call it anything you want, but I'm just selfish enough to want you all to myself. I won't settle for anything less. And I don't think you will either. Mm. Oh, Lee. If things were only that simple. They could be, darling, if you just let them. You know we're right for each other. And I'm as sure of this as I've ever been of anything in my life. I wish you were as confident about the campaign as you are about me. I could be with you at my side. 
Never give up, do you? Nope. And I don't intend to. <laughs> All right, how about some coffee? <laughs> okay, thank you. Are. Ah, they give you any cream in there? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I always I always order mine black. No matter. I'll get some. Okay. I'll be right back in a minute. Okie doke. Mm. Oh, answer the phone for me, will you, Lee? Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hello, Kate. Is that you? Um, no, it isn't. Um, uh, do you mind if I ask who's calling? Oh, not at all. It's Dave Phillips. Uh, uh, who's this? Oh, Dave. Dave, I, um, I didn't recognize your voice. It's, um, it's Lee. Lee Carruthers. How are hey, you? Listen, I, um, I don't know if Kate can come to the phone right now. Uh, what do you mean? Well, uh, I'll tell you the truth, she's, uh, she's still in bed. I, uh, I just checked a couple of minutes ago, and she sound asleep, to be honest with you. And I, well, she had a late night last night. You, you know what I mean. And, um, <laughs> gee, I, I mean, if this is something really important, I, you want me to wake her? Uh, no, 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 not at all. All right, uh, do you want me to give her a message then? Uh, no, it's, it's not important, really. Uh, thanks anyway. Oh. Who's that on the telephone? Oh, nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Unless you're interested in having central air conditioning installed in this place. Thirty-nine ninety-five a month, no money down. Why would a salesperson call at this hour of the day? I don't know. It beats me. <laughs> Listen, I've got to run, darling. I want to get to that office bright and early today. I'm going to see you later, around noon. Right. Hey, thanks for breakfast. Anytime, my dear. Anytime. <laughs> see you later. Mm. I can tell by the look on your face, things didn't go well. What happened? Lee Carruthers answered the phone. Lee Carruthers? At this hour of the morning? <laughs> Did Mom have any explanation? I didn't speak to her. Lee said she was still in bed, asleep. No, I don't believe that. God knows I don't want to believe it. But what reason would he have to lie? I don't know. I knew that they were, were going out together, but I, I had no idea that they were... Daddy, we don't know for sure that, that they spent the night together. I mean, it's perfectly understandable under the circumstances. She did divorce me, but why wouldn't she want to be with other men? Please don't talk like that. But it's true. What I can't understand is why it hurts as much as it does. I feel like she cheated on me. Isn't that ridiculous after all these years? Ah, oh, forgive me, Stacey, for being so maudlin about this. It's okay. Um, why don't you give her a call later on? Uh, what would I say to her? Hey, she made a commitment to your fundraising, didn't she? I know, but I and wouldn't she know wouldn't what... go back on her word, ever. Not Mom. Besides, don't build a case on circumstantial evidence. Because that's all you've got at this point. But the insurance policy clearly states that Kingsley International Insurance Company will cover any damages resulting from the collapse of the building or any part of the building. It's right here in black and white. You're quite right, Mr. Prescott. But if you'll look closely at section H, paragraph 16, you'll see that it also quite clearly states that our company does not cover loss resulting directly or indirectly from negligence on the part of the insured. Negligence? But I told you, it's not our fault. I'm afraid our preliminary evidence indicates otherwise, Mr. Prescott. According to the soil analysis report, you were warned not to build on that site 
And yet you went ahead and did so. But I swear to you, that soil analysis report was a phony. Oh, it is, is it? P and D gave us the go-ahead. Ask Peter Davidson. He saw it. I'm well aware of your allegations. Unfortunately, we haven't been able to uncover any evidence that would support such a claim. We will, of course, continue our investigation, but at this point in time, it appears that Kingsley International Insurance is not liable for any damages, lawsuits, or other claims resulting from the collapse of the Canterbury Project. As the situation stands now, such liability rests solely with Prescott Development. But I'm telling you, we've, we've been set up. We cannot settle claims based upon suppositions alone. I'm sure you can understand our position. No, I don't understand your position. And I'm letting you know right now that if your, co your company doesn't make good on this claim, I'm ready to sue. Well, that's certainly within your right. But I must warn you, legally speaking, you won't have a leg to stand on. Marianne, I'm sure you remember my sister, Marianne. Oh, yes, of course, Mr. Uh, Prescott. Good to see you again. Hi, Mr. Benton. She would know. Marianne, the soil analysis report, it gave us the go-ahead, didn't it? Oh, Gil, please, not now. You'll have to excuse me, Mr. Benton. I've been up all night long. I'm afraid I won't be much help to either one of you today. Dr. Mark. Yes. Please come in. I'm Sebastian Knight, Lee Carruthers' campaign manager. Well, it's very nice to meet you, Mr. Knight. Oh, please, call me Sebastian. All right, if you call me Ben. <laughs> Glad to. Come on in. Thank you. Well, you're, uh... You're with some uh, health concern, is that it? Yes, I am. The Chesterfield Free Clinic. Oh, yes, of course, of course. Uh, wonderful work. I've, I've heard a great deal about that. Have you really? Now, Lee's very concerned with the people who live in that section of town. Uh, he's backing some low-income housing in that area. Yes, I know. That's why I thought he might be interested in helping us out. Well, I, I'm sure he would be. <laughs> Just uh, exactly what did you have in mind? Well, I don't know if you're aware of it or not, but we're a privately funded health clinic. We accept no government funds whatsoever. Oh, really? Well, that's a very popular concept with the voters these days, you know. Anything to cut back on federal spending. <laughs> true, true, but it does mean we have to get our backing somewhere. Mm. We're going to be holding a fundraising benefit soon, and I was hoping that Lee Carruthers could be there. Well, toward the end of next week, well, I haven't cleared the time with Dr. Phillips yet, but I'll get all that information and get it to you this afternoon. Well, it, uh, it certainly sounds like something that Lee would like to become involved with. Of course, I'd have to have an exact time and date before I could give you a definite answer. Of course. Uh, and besides, if Lee couldn't make it, uh, I'm sure he may want to uh, make a contribution of some kind. Yeah, he's a great believer in that kind of a private project. Well, we would appreciate that very yeah, much. Yeah, we have to do our share of fundraising, too, so I know how difficult these things can be. <laughs> but now, if Lee gets elected, well, I'm sure he'd do everything in his power to make sure that you folks got all the support you need. Of course, in the meantime, uh, well, he may need some help from you, if, uh, if you know what I mean. I can assure you, we'll consider it. Good. Well, I do hope Mr. Carruthers can make it. Uh, it shouldn't take much of his time, and there'll be quite a few prominent people there. It may be a great opportunity to do a little campaigning. Did I hear you mention campaigning? Oh, Lee, this is uh, Ben Martin, uh, Dr. Ben Martin. He's with the... Uh, uh, Chesterfield Free Clinic. Uh, nice to meet you. Well, it's nice to meet you, Ben. What can we do for you? Well, he, uh, he's going to be doing some fundraising, and uh, he'd like you to come. Well, listen, I would love to help out in any way I can. As long as there's no, you know, uh, problem with my schedule. In that case, Sebastian is sub for me. Well, thank you both very much. And I do sincerely hope to see you down at the clinic next week. Listen, you count on that. I'll be there. If there's no conflict, okay. it's all set. Nice to see you again. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Lee, I've got some terrific news. What's that? The latest poll shows us only two percentage points behind Wainwright. That's terrific. See, now, I told you not to worry. Yeah, it's my job to worry. Hey, listen, that same poll showed that the people still give Wainwright a confidence factor of two to one over you, just because he's a solid family man. Look, it's time for you to make your move on Kate. You get her to say I do, maybe we can wrap up this campaign. I'm working on it, Sebastian. I'm working on it.
contrary to the way it may seem, Mr. Prescott, you and I are not necessarily adversaries. Now, if, as you claim, the Office of Planning and Development is at fault, our company would naturally pay off your claim. Have you discussed this with your attorney? Yes, she suggested that we sue the Office of P&D as well. well. If you're right, we might both have a good case against that office, not to mention the individuals involved. However, we're talking about a very large amount of money here. According to our initial calculations, you've incurred a loss of at least $4 million. One doesn't collect such a sum on the basis of mere suppositions. You need evidence, Mr. Prescott. Cold, hard facts. Without it, you don't stand a chance. Well, good day. I'll let you know if I hear anything. Please do. Did you hear that, Mary Ann? If this insurance policy doesn't pay off, we lose everything. Everything. What's the matter with you? Doesn't that compute or don't you care? Of course I care, Gil. I have been up all night long worried about Russ. He may lose his life, doesn't that compute with you? He may lose his life for things that he's done. And we may lose everything, and we haven't done anything to deserve it. Lee, tell you the good news? Now what? The latest poll shows us only two percentage points behind Wainwright. Oh, Lee, wonderful. You are going to win. I knew it. <laughs> With you by my side, I can do anything. Oh. <laughs> what do you say? You want to celebrate? Well, we have good cause. Well, why don't you try that little French restaurant around the corner? They've done a lot of work on that place. Very charming, very romantic. Is he trying to tell us something? I think so. <laughs> you want to give it a try anyhow? Why not? All right, let's go. We'll see you later, Sebastian. <laughs> Take your time, you two. Everything here is under control. <laughs>